concluding the month of September. Thank God for the good hand of God upon your life as an individual and as families. Celebrate him, magnify him. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Take all the glory, take all the praise. Would you ask Jesus specifically today what to look forward to returning with? What do you want me to do for you? I must return today with my certificate of perfect soundness, never to know sickness anymore. I must return from here today with a seal of longevity on my life. So help me, Jesus. Help me to be sensitive. Help me to be focused. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, there is no level of darkness that can ever say no to the authority of light. Light is the master of darkness any day, any time, anywhere. <laughs> Believers are simply victims of their ignorance of the truth you shall know the truth and it's enough to set you free with all that has gone on since the month began both in the midweek service and the uh, sunday services at wsf level covenant hour of prayer there is no way you can imbibe this light and still be tormented by darkness. There is no way. Open my eyes, Jesus, to behold the wonders in your world. Open my eyes to see beyond the letters to the wonders. Go ahead and pray. Everybody go ahead and pray. Because our access to the light of longevity guarantees longevity. Our access to the light of total health guarantees a life of total health. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Open my eyes to see beyond the letters into the wonders of your world. Open my eyes to see beyond the letters into the wonders of your world. The psalmist prayed, open my eyes to see wondrous things out of thy law. Lord, lead me beyond the letters into the wonders of your war. Let today mark the end of every form of struggle over my health. Let my own word come today that will steer up a turn around in my health. Let every threat of death hanging over my life, hanging around my family be over today. In Jesus precious name we have prayed light is sweet and it's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun light is sweet is what establishes our dominion in this world of darkness light is sweet there is no degree of darkness that can resist the authority of light and that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. That is the true light that lighted every man. Every man is lightable. Every man is lightable. Every believer is lightable. That comes into this world. <laughs> you can't be illuminated and still be tormented. 
Can darkness torment light? Can darkness block the way forward for light? Now you are stepping into that realm of light today. And your sonship will be made manifest to the world around you. Lord Jesus, grant each one's desire today and bring each one into a new experience with you. In Jesus' precious name. The covenant day of long life today will be a turnaround day in your life. Death will stay off your territory and your family. There are families here today you will never know mourning again. God is turning your mourning into dancing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By one word encounter, encounter with one word from heaven in 1979, on the day that Ogunpa took place in Ibadan, I got my certification for perfect soundness. As I got from the Lord, I myself took your infirmity. I saw it as He took my place in sickness. So I can live a sickness free life. I saw it took my place so I can go free like Barabbas went free. And I screamed, yea, I can never be sick. And Jesus, by grace, has kept the covenant. And 40 years after, I'm still bouncing. The end has come to your struggle over your head today. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated, please. Amen. A man came to me in 1996 and he was sobbing and sobbing. And I said, What about? He said, Nothing works. Satan is all over. He's all tormenting. He's manipulating me. I said, Well, you see, you can't hear anything I'm saying to you now, but go down to the bookstore or in the old church and buy the book Satan Get Lost. And I give you seven days. Go and read it. And come back, then I can attend to you. When he came back, he was beaming with smiles. He said, I didn't know Satan is at this chip. I didn't know Satan is at this chip. Light came and the wicked became helpless. It's the same thing over any truth. I knew we were heading for a heat free marriage. So things were not common in our own time. I got it from the world. If you do this and do this, and do this, it will be heaven on earth. And I subscribe to doing those things majorly from Ephesians 5 23 to 30. There is nothing, to, there is nothing mystical about the truth. It's plain, it's raw. So my counselor asked me, David, what are you looking forward to when we had a session with him? I said, he's free married. He said, how? I said, we've been in culture for some time, there is no crisis. He said, now, when you live apart, it's easier not to step on one another's toes. But when you live together, it is impossible not to step on one another's toes. I said, sir, I'm sitting with you on this coach. Why am I not stepping on your toe? Because nobody can be closer than we are now. Me, you. I said, two reasons. I'm not blind. Second, I'm not wicked. It's mine. And that was the end of it. Not one prayer point. Oh, Lord, make this family work. That has come from my mouth. Once. Once. Oh God. Let this family work. So when you take your offering and you are praying with heat. With heat. I will mourn. What are you praying? Whatever it tells you to do. Do it. Those people who are pouring water in the water pot. Were they praying? <laughs> Pour water in the water pot. Amen. Not that you are now jacking. Waters are pouring. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, listen to me. Just doing what he says to do, they look too simple to be true, but that is where the power lies. The power lies not in the prayer. The power lies in the obedience. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello. 
No, sir. Yes, he said we should pray over all things. That's okay. But until you do what is what commands to do, prayer can be a substitute for obedience. Every act of God is triggered by man's obedience. Every act of God. Every act of God. If you hearken to my voice and observe to do what I say to do for you to do, I will say to her above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. And those are the things we pray for. They are the things we pray for. That verse 1 to verse 13. They are the things people pray for all their life. Amen. Amen. For your work to be blessed, the work of your hand, your family to be blessed, that's okay. But your willful obedience, your delightsome obedience is the answer to all those questions. Mm. You know something? The end has come to your guest works in life. Amen. Amen. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Now, when we are doing end of month Thanksgiving, please note that it's not just about carrying children and um, um, new marriages and all that. It's about your life. I mean, there is no month here without people celebrating bad days. Amen. January, February. If you don't thank God for the year, you put the next year in danger. Because you are not there because you are strong. You are there because of grace. So, Father, I thank you for another year. Now, maybe it's not your month of bad day. I thank you for another month. Not everybody that ended the other month ended this one. I thank you for it. You went out every day and you came back. I mean, on whose authority? And by your power? No. Just be, he said, be thankful. If you don't want your tank to draw, to, to go dry, be thankful to God for every act of his mercy in your life. And our tradition here is every end of month, we give God special thanks for the month. The bad days of the month, the dedication of buildings of the month, the breakthrough in business of the month, the children of the month, the marriage of the month. Because every month, he bears or a manner of fruit, a manner of blessing. Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2. And so we are responding quickly, not waiting for end of year Thanksgiving. One year is too long. Thank him for every month because that tree bears 12 manner of fruit and brings forth his fruits every month, not every year. How many have enjoyed God's grace this month? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Is there no balm in Gilead? Jeremiah 22, I mean, chapter 8, verse 22. Is there no physician there? Why are my people still struggling over their head? Has God not made adequate provision for his people? Has he not sent them the great physician of all times? The only oral oral specialist known to the world? The one who speaks and the dead hears. Why is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? One, our ignorance of the physician. And subsequently our ignorance of his prescription. Jesus came as that great physician and introduced himself so. Matthew 9, 12 to 13. I will have mercy. Amen. Is the great physician introduce himself. And this physician, he is all man of sickness and all man of disease. Matthew 4, 23. And he gave to his apostles to go about and heal all man of sickness and all man of disease. Matthew 10, verse 1. When they ask him, physician, heal thyself, he says, see myself, see me. You see sickness, you see disease, you see pain. No, it can be found there. So we saw him as the great physician from scriptures. And his word is his great prescription. So when you recognize the great physician and you embrace his great, his great prescriptions, you enjoy great health. Great health. Great health. 
How do I know his word is in the description? He said, my son, attend to my word and give ear to my sins. Let them not depart from your heart. Your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. For they shall be left to them that find it. And medicine to all their flesh. He calls it health in the King James Version. Medicine to all their flesh. So God's word carries medicinal values. Praise God. Everybody living in here today caught something from the world. Did what? They caught something from the world. They came to hear him and to be healed. And they were healed, every one of them. They came to his clinic and they received his prescription and they turned their life around on the spot. He sent his word and he healed them. And so that a centurion servant was made whole the same, same hour. Matthew 8, 8. Speak the word only. And the word went forth and it was recovered supernaturally. Praise God. So, every statement of scriptures concerning your head is his prescription. Just like doctors write their prescription down and give it to you to go and look for the drugs in town. So, he gives you his word that is ordained to address your head situations and set you free. Amen. Now, the good news is we are in the last day of this great feast. How many agree it has been a great feast? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the last day of every feast is everybody's day. So today, in the name of Jesus, whatever remains for you to enjoy total liberty from sickness and disease is going home with you from here. Amen. Among the great prescriptions of this great physician is the joy and rejoicing therapy. Joy and rejoicing therapy. Amen. That is, the joy of the Lord is a fountain of sound health. Sound health. Because a merry heart dwelt good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Proverbs 17, 22. And the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, will be in command of his body. Praise God. But a broken spirit who can bear. So depression makes you vulnerable to oppression of the devil. And bring people down into sickness and disease. So we have this joy and rejoicing medication that's ordained to keep you bouncing in health and that for all the days of your life. Amen. He said in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, he said, go your way and eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is, a whole, is holy unto our God. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is the secret behind the strength of the saints. The joy of the Lord is the fountain of strength. Fountain of health and vitality. The joy of the Lord. Therefore from this day onward. You will never suffer depression and sorrow of heart again. Yeah. Until our heart is broken, in most cases, our health, our health, our body cannot be broken. So an end has come to every form of breakdown on your body, yeah. on your mind, yeah. on your emotions. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, by redemption, we assess the joy of salvation. Psalm 51 verse 12. They call it joy unspeakable, full of glory. 
You can't tell where it's coming from. You can't doubt its reality. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. That's the joy of salvation. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit or one of the proofs of redemption. When you see fruits, call it proofs. One of the proofs of redemption. If you are always going and sagging and going and sagging, check. You may, ne you may even need to be saved so you can be sure of your salvation. Every truly saved person manifests the proof of joy. So from today, what is happening notwithstanding, it is, you can't suppress it. The joy of salvation cannot be suppressed. It's there in season, out of season. Therefore, from today, in the name of Jesus, no one here shall be a victim of sorrow of heart again. <laughs> Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. There are three ways we are says this realm of joy. Number one is through salvation, which I just mentioned. Galatians 3.22, joy is listed as one of the nine fruits of the Spirit. I call them proofs of redemption. Proofs of redemption. Proofs of redemption. Number two is the baptism in the Holy Ghost that gets believers drunk or drunken with joy. Drunken with joy. Be ye not filled with wine to which is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. So it gets you drunk. Ephesians 5, 18. When the Holy Ghost came in the upper room, the people said, these people are drunk with wine. He got them drunk. Others mock and said, these men are full of new wine. How? Now, the Holy Spirit is just oil of gladness that was upon Jesus. Psalm 45, verse 6 and 7. Oil of gladness. Every believer needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can't fabricate that. You can't. You glide over issues as if they are not real. You, you glide over issues as if they are not real. The whole world seems to be crashing down, but you can't see it. You are just drunken with the oil of gladness. The Bible calls it again the oil of joy in Isaiah 61. Verse 1, the of the Lord is upon me. And then it will give you beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for money. The government will pray for the spirit of heaviness. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So it's the oil of gladness. It's the oil of joy. So when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you are just drunken with the wine of joy. Amen. You live above all situations and circumstances that they are not real. You just live above them. Now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Ghost will start manifesting this dimension of joy, this intoxicating joy, in your own life from henceforth. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, my wife and I have been here together for since we got married. She has never asked me one day what is wrong. One, one day. I've never arrived home and fed one thing. I didn't feel any other thing than God. I just feel. Uh, amen. amen. You insult me, it doesn't touch me. You are doing your job and I'm doing my job. So your job is looking for who to insult. My job is looking for who to rescue. Hallelujah. <laughs> Each one has his job. Glory to God. Amen. 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 You know why those who abuse me are frustrated? I didn't hear. <laughs> Amen. And when I meet you on the street and you greet me, I will embrace you and pat you on the back because I didn't hear what you said. So I just enjoy loving you and embracing you and I go my way. Now, nothing will break your joy anymore. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. 
And then we have the joy that comes by word encounters. What do I call it? Word thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy words became what? The joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Every encounter with the words tears joy. Amen. Amen. You know why? Jesus came as joy to the world. And he's the living world. So every encounter with the world tears of joy on our inside. So watch any believer that is really working in revelation. They are always living in jubilation. Nothing goes down. The world comes and tears up another level of joy, another level of joy, and they're just moving and going. Now, from these three platforms, in the name of Jesus, there shall be no more breakdowns in your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Not, not, jo not just ephemeral joy, the joy on the face. But rejoicing from the heart. The Bible said at that time Jesus rejoiced in spirit. Luke 10, 21. Rejoiced in spirit. He just spain like a cocoon. He rejoiced in spirit. Father, I thank you because you have hid this thing from the west and the present and you have made it known unto babes. I thank you, Jesus. He just rejoiced in the spirit. May that joy of the spirit that puts you on top of situations and circumstances be your portion from today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. What is in joy that he is? One, joy brings you into God's presence where the devil cannot approach. And most sickness and diseases are oppressions of the devil. So you are ushered into God's presence with joy. For in his presence there must be fullness of joy. And the right hand there are pleasures evermore. Light and darkness cannot coexist. So God cannot hang around where God is. So God's presence separates you from every satanic assault. And joy is the facilitator of such joy. I mean, of such position in God. Therefore, from today, with God's presence, everything will begin to turn around in your favor from henceforth. Also, with joy, we assess the secrets of God, the deep things of God. That guarantees a turn around in our life. He said, Thou will show me the path of life for in thy presence is fullness of joy. So you have to approach that presence with fullness of joy, and it begins to show you the path of life. Recently, I began to embark on a project I call My Reflections. And it's amazing. The things I've had, the things I've taught, the things I've handled of the word of life most of which I never taught yet. My reflections. And it's awesome to see how God was unveiling things one level after another, after another, and every insight changes, level, changes people's level. Please embrace joy. It's a virtue that puts you on top of life situations and circumstances. You can't have the part of life and still be taken for a ride by the enemy. You can't assess light and darkness continue to assault your life. That's what joy does. It grants you and I access to the deep things of God, putting us in high command of the issues of life. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. So it takes joy to draw. It takes joy. Like having a bucket without having a rope. When will you ever draw water? You need a rope on the bucket to assess the deep well so you can bring water out. So your effort in studying and struggling and reading and searching will make no meaning without a rope. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the well of salvation. Isaiah 12 verse 3. It takes joy to draw from the deep things of God. 
I therefore decree a fresh baptism of the oil of joy and the oil of gladness upon your life. Yeah. Nobody will ever ask you anymore what is wrong. Yeah. Nobody will ever have any need to say sorry to you anymore. Yeah. Every mockery around your life today will be turned to glory. For every shame anyone may have experienced in any area of his life, God will give you double restoration. Yeah. But Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, What? Rejoice. And he was a man of abundance of revelation. The more joyful you are, the greater your asset to the deep things of God, and the higher your command over the issues of life. So please know that it's by the word we are made whole, it's by the word that we are kept healthy and strong. You won't miss that portion in Jesus' name. You won't miss that portion in Jesus' name. I want you to know that there is healing virtue in joy and rejoicing. There is healing virtue in joy and rejoicing. Like I once said, you cannot be oppressed until you are forced depressed. You cannot be oppressed until you are forced depressed. When you are depressed, you are separated from God's presence and they will give the enemy room to launch his attack on your life. So I cause the root of depression from now. I cause the root of depression from now. You'll never suffer its plague anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand and celebrate Jesus. Thank you for showing me this part of life. I'm going to live with this all the days of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please note that the price for your total health has been fully paid. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. You don't pay for any goods twice. It will amount to total ignorance. It has been paid for, so the package is yours. So take it today and enjoy it for life. You believe this report. It will nullify the other report. The report you believe is the experience you have. Who had believed our report? You believe his report concerning your redemption and the things that accompany your salvation. Then it nullifies the other report, throws it into the dustbin. Someone testified in the first service, had this plague of tuberculosis, and went to Zaria. There is a tuberculosis center there, you know, and um, they ran the test and told them it's a multi drug resistant tuberculosis. That is, it attacks every medication. No medication has effect on it. And that uh, you have three days. Is it three days you it? Three weeks. You have three weeks to live so go, so organize, organize your death. So he ran to Canaan to meet Jesus, the great physician. And hand was laid on him. According to him, he said, I said, I caused this plague from the roots. He couldn't eat for days. He began to eat the same day. Amen. Now, he called the center, the research center in Zaria, to find out, because, now, you know the phone? They say the result of the test will not come out until three months. But he will die in three weeks. So, what are you doing the test for? <laughs> he called them, they thought that it was his brother that was calling. He said, I'm the one. <laughs> you are alive? <laughs> he, well, today makes it ten years. And they climbed this puppy today. Amen. Amen. Everything I cause in your life today dries from the root. Yeah. You know, I went in search of God. And I returned, he said, I've touched your tongue with a coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you say it, you see it. 
one of my sons here had his uh, wife kidnapped in Ondo State. And they called me at 9 p.m. I said, the decree is released in two hours. Caught her to 11 on the spot. They release her. <laughs> Whatever I decree over your life today is delivered for a testimony. <laughs> one of our daughters here was kidnapped. I mean, it's a sister to one of our daughters here. Kidnapped by ritual killers. They are not kidnappers calling for money. Amen. And I said, I decree her release in seven hours. Five minutes to seven hours. Five minutes to seven hours. I didn't have to speak to them. It's just like you speaking to a lizard. Amen. Amen. So there is no kidnapper under heaven that touches anyone called a winner who will survive. <laughs> Except God has not sent me. He placed that authority in my tongue. My son here called me one night. Akwata. Couldn't find his son who came to Canaan in the morning. <laughs> and I said, is he turning back tonight? He said, I don't know where he is, but he's turning back tonight. He couldn't tell I found home. He just found his way back. Wherever he was tied down, they released him. Angels of God, pick them up. Now, listen to me. You will not suffer any plague of sickness or disease anymore. If anyone is on your life now, I command them to dry up in the name of Jesus. It's over. You know, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved? Hosea chapter 12, verse 3, verse 13. By the prophetic authority over my life, I decree your rescue today. <laughs> there was a very terrible landlady in one of the services, I think second service or something. Was it third service? Second. And a lot of women were pregnant in the house. He was bragging that they would not deliver. <laughs> Landlady, not that he didn't pay her money. Home. And three women will be coming to this, my daughter, and saying, <laughs> You'll never deliver this child. This child. You'll never. If the woman said to her, Bring me your first son, and then you can deliver this one. Let me eat your first son. So she came and came under that blessing and felt a cool breeze on her life. Eh? Got back home, they have carried the woman to the hospital. Amen. Amen. By 4 p.m. of the following day, the woman was dead. <laughs> and as soon as the woman died, she lived up again. And she delivered the bouncing baby boy. <laughs> so anybody who said, over his dead body concerning an issue of your life he will die and you have your testimony Amen. one head of arm robbery gang said I've told you when you see winner sticker behind any car don't touch it while they took the car the car can't start they call their mechanic their robber mechanic the car can't start he said, but I warned you before, when you see this sticker on any car, leave it. Leave it home. <laughs> so two, two women came to this woman and said, we don't want to die. Please go and deliver. We don't want to die. That was in a trance. We don't want to die. Take your baby. And that was the end of it. Anybody that attempts on any life here will pay for it with his life. Very quickly, today is our covenant day of long life. And I'd like you to know that long life is your heritage 
in Christ. And let me show you how it is. The Lord said to Abraham in Genesis 15, 15, and thou shalt go to thy father's in peace. Not just long life with struggle. In peace. Not groaning to die. In peace. In peace. In peace. And thou shalt go, shall be buried in a good old age. Now, whatever blessing was upon Abraham has come upon us in redemption. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law by being made a cause for us. For it's written, cause everyone that hung upon the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So whatever God said to Abraham, he said to us in Christ. So, a good old age is your right in redemption. At 80, you'll be bouncing with the energy of a 40-year-old. At 100, you'll be bouncing with the energy of a 50-year-old. At 120, your natural force will not be abated. And your eyes will not be dim. If Jesus studies, you will see your children turn to the fourth generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please understand that long life is not a matter of luck or genes. Long life is a matter of light. Access to the light of your heritage of long life. Access to the light of the heritage of your long life. Of long life. Nothing delivered by luck in the kingdom. I commend you to go into the word of his grace, it's able to, which is able to build you up and to give you your inheritance among them that are sanctified. So it is by the word that we assess our inheritance. It's not by luck. It's not by genes. It's by the word. By the word. By the word. And so, How long is long life? Remember I said with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Psalm 91 verse 16. How long is long life? David went to his father's at 70 and they call it a good old age. Amen. How long is long life? David saw as far as 70 and when it was 70, he disappeared. How long is long life? There is no guesswork in the kingdom. God has specifics on every time of his covenant. So in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, the Lord said, My spirit shall no more, shall not always strive with man because is nothing but flesh yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years amen that is God speaking directly but David came and said in chapter 90 of Psalms he said, the days of our lives, verse 10, are three score years and ten. That is David speaking. He made this choice for 70. He said, by reason of saying it could be 90, but it's all uh, labor and sorrow. That's not what God said. He talked about peace 
and a good old age, not a worrisome old age, not a stinking old age. Praise God. And as far as your eyes can see unto you, will I give it? So you have it. Now, this is what the Lord said. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sinners away from you. There shall not be, be cast their young, nor be barren in the land. And the number of your days I will fulfill. That already points to the fact that your days have a number. The number that God numbered. The number that came out of the mouth of God. And that number is 120. How many will receive that? How many receive that in their spirit? That's your portion. That's your portion. If it has no number, how do we know whether I have fulfilled it or not? It has a number. It has a number. And I see that number fulfilled in everyone that receives this truth today. It's already happening. It's already happening. So, stop practicing age. Praise God. Just stop practicing agedness. You are 50 and you are moving like somebody is 200. <laughs> Amen. First, a man thinking his half. So easy. Say with me, long life is my heritage. Long life is my heritage. And I will not sell off to ignorance. And I will not sell off to ignorance. I will not sell off to ignorance. Now, I decree today a seal of a good old age upon your life. No devil shall cut short your lifespan. No one here will ever bury their children. No one dies young in your family again. Every siege of accident, motorbike accident, tricycle accident, motorbike accident, boat accident, air crash, will never be mentioned in your lineage again. Now, this is the good news. The good news is Satan no longer has the key of death. I said Satan no longer has the key of death. He used to have it. He lost it at the death and resurrection of Christ. Today, Jesus has the key in his hand. And is holding it in your favor. So Satan cannot determine when you live here. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. And me that was dead, behold, I'm alive and I live forevermore. And have, and have the keys of hell and of death. That's Jesus speaking. Now, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15, the Bible said, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had, had, had in the past, had the power of death. So Satan no longer has it. He used to have it. He lost it when Jesus rose from the dead. Now, that means forget about Satan concerning your lifespan. Be focused on the terms of the covenant and you see how helpless Satan will become. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come and say the battle is over. Say it convincingly. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What must I do to actualize my heritage of long life? There is always what we must do to arrive at what we want. That's why we call him a covenant-keeping God. Until we do what he says to do, we cannot assess what he has in store for us. What must I do to enjoy my heritage of long life? Number one, be committed to serving God as a lifestyle. Be committed to serving God as a lifestyle. Enjoy it. 
celebrate the opportunity. Because as you serve me, I will bless your bread and your water, I said. I will take something away from your life. You shall not suffer miscarriage, nor be barren. Everything will start working in your life. And the number of your days, I will fulfill. Amen. Moses, the servant of God, was 120 years old. His natural force was not abated. His eyes were not dim. And he remains a covenant keeping God for life. Be committed to serving God and the interests of his kingdom as a lifestyle. And long life will begin to answer to you. The good news is, you won't miss your portion in it. Yeah. Number two, be committed to dwelling in the house of God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall abide in the house of the Lord forever. Be committed to dwelling in the house of God and you'll be going from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. Be committed to dwelling in the house of God. Because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and God's people shall possess their possession. Dwelling in the house of God entitles to the goodness of the house of the Lord. And that includes health and vitality. That includes long life why the only way a predator can cut or pounce on his prey is when he's separated from his flock as long as among the herd it's difficult to attack him there because others will rise up against the invader and destroy him so until the devil succeeds in separating us from our father's house he can't get at us. Somebody testified in the second service, uh, the first service. Um, he got tired and went off Jesus, went off the fellowship of the saints for two years. And he got a growth in the neck, goita. And Jesus met him when he returned, when she returned. Jesus met him and rooted that goita off her system. Just by that prophetic word in 24 hours, that evil seed is out of your life. And that was it. It couldn't be captured until it was separated from the fellowship of the saints. So you no matter how strong a lion, when a lion is alone, it becomes vulnerable. She becomes when a lion is alone, it becomes vulnerable. It becomes vulnerable. It becomes totally helpless. We are lions after the order of Christ, but our security is within the fold. Our security is where? Our security is within the fold. Whatever separates you from the fold is out to make you vulnerable to divorce. You will never be separated. <laughs> Nobody could have made Peter to deny Jesus if those other disciples were there. But he looked around, he looked left, he can't find anybody. He said, I never knew him. You don't know how vulnerable you are until you separate yourself from the fellowship of the saints. Peter denied Jesus three times. He wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. Jesus chose 12 that they might be with him. And they might send them forth. So they were there with him. He was in the midst of the herd. It was in the midst of the pride. Please never separate yourself. It's a risk. It's a risk. Until the devil, the devil succeeded in moving the prodigal son out of his father's house, he could not be stripped naked. But when he did, he stripped him naked. His life was in his hand. God's grace found him and brought him back home. And then got restored. Please don't play with church. Is for your security. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and God's people shall possess their possession. Obadiah verse 17. And that includes your possession of health and vitality. Your possession of your long life heritage in Christ. They are all guaranteed upon Mount Zion. Don't trade off. It will be costly. Number three, keep speaking. Be committed to speaking right words. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Be careful what you say. There are many such suicidal cases in the body of Christ. Anybody can die at any time. Then they pick him. This can happen to anybody no matter how much weight he claims to have. Then he becomes the next victim. God does not know jokes. Every idle word that proceeds out of the mouth of any man, he will pay for it. He will pay for it. But I say unto you that every idle word, you don't mean it, but you said it. That men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Most people today are victims of their words. Nothing works in Nigeria, so nothing works in their life. This business is completely out of fashion. Uh, it can't work, it can't produce. I'm just thinking of what next to do. He has killed it already and buried it. Well, I don't care what the word says, but doctor said that this thing has packed up. I mean, uh, he said, but the word said it took me five minutes. Maybe people forget about that. I said, doctor said to me that this thing has packed up. And then you pack it up. It's your mouth that packed it up. They said to somebody, they said, no, that's not me. Because he lives, I shall live also. This I see that he said, made that he in the war. Himself took my infirmity. And in one moment, they check it again, they, say, they can't find it anymore. Why? The report you believe is what determines your experience. Well, the good news is, God has ordained long life for you you will not allow the enemy to cut it short by ignorance. Yeah. Well, one must be quick to demand his long life rights whenever you are challenged. Somebody was suffered a boat hazard and while he was drowning, he cried, Jesus, I refuse to die. And a hand caught him and took him into the safety boat and disappear. Jesus, I refuse to die. Not, oh, this is my end at last. Jesus, I refuse to die. And a hand from heaven caught him and brought him to a safety boat and disappeared. Be quick in your response against every attack on your long life heritage. When the word came from Isaiah that Ezekiah would die, as soon as Ezekiah left, he turned to the wall and said, remember now, O Lord, have work with for you in truth and with a perfect heart. And God said to Isaiah, go back there. Tell him I've added 15 more years to him. Be quick in your response to any attack against your heritage of long life. And I can tell you this, if Jesus studies, you will see your children's children yeah. to the fourth generation. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Lift up your right hand, everybody. Would you thank God for your heritage of long life in Christ? Would you thank God for showing you the way to actualize in that? Would you thank God for destroying the siege of death over your life and your family? The siege of untimely death? Would you thank God for the breaking forth of light today? That has come to shatter every gang up of the powers of darkness. In Jesus' precious name. Let's read from Isaiah 49 and verse 24 to 28. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? 
But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. No matter where they have tied down your untimely death, you are getting off that trap today. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contend with you. And I will save your children. Hear what he said in the next verse. And I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood. As with sweet wine. And all the flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy savior. And thy redeemer. The mighty one of Jacob. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. No matter where your harassers are hiding, no matter where those who want to eat up your flesh are hiding, God will feed them with their own flesh. Amen. And your liberty and that of your family shall be established. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen. This will happen practically in your life. Let this form your thought. My future is secure. By the light of God's word. My days have number. And as I serve God, he has committed himself to fulfill the number of my days. And I know the number from his mouth. 120 years has been ordained as man's lifespan on the earth. I'm taking it all. He said, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. For all that believe in it, the scourge of untimely death is finally over. Yeah. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Very quickly, you are here at this service. And you are not born again yet. I'd like to pray with you. That is the number one key to living the overcomer's life. Nobody has an inheritance in a family that it does not belong to. You only have an inheritance in your father. Until God becomes your father, you don't have an inheritance in him. But now are we sons of God. You are here in this service who want to become one of the children of God. Today, I will pray with you. You want your sins forgiven? I will pray with you. You want to become a new creature? I will pray with you. So wherever you are, please stand to your feet. And I will be praying with you right there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please stand to your feet. I'll be praying with you right now. And God bless you as you do. You want to surrender your life to Christ today and become a partaker of the blessings of the kingdom of God. Please stand to your feet. God bless you as you do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody standing, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. I'll be praying for you on that side. And the official there will assist you in filling out your card if you need such assistance. Number two, there are people here that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. Until we return, we cannot be restored. Maybe some challenges came along the line. There was a disconnect between you and God. You want to return back to him today so you can be restored in grand style. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ today? Please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. God bless us to do. Amen. Also move to the nearest eye to where you are. And there I'll be praying for you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. While we pray this prayer, operation befriend a neighbor. You don't have a copy of it. Please signify and not as we put that in your hand. All of us who are standing for these prayers, please bow your head. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. 
I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be set free. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. Today, I return back to you in faith. And I believe I'm restored back to the faith. And I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Lift up your hands and I pray over you. In the name of Jesus, everyone that is praying this prayer, I decree the covering of the blood over your life. No devil shall draft you back from following Christ. You will run this race to the end. You will lead you overcome as life. And you will make heaven at the end of your journey. You will not miss your step in this race. In Jesus' precious name. Church, give the Lord a big hand for them. Amen. Please complete those slips and pass them on to the church officials around with you. And be reminded of Believers Foundation class that hosts every Monday. You go for only two Mondays. Uh, the outreach office will get in touch with you today to let you know which one is nearest to where you live. According as contained in your address. Um, be there. It's only 6 to 7.30 p.m. You'll be glad you did. Shall we all rise to our feet? Please stand to your feet. Amen. Nothing sets free from the wickedness of darkness like the power of light. The day the salvation of your soul was settled, the salvation of your body was settled the same hour. So Satan has no power over your body. So every contention over your body is declared over today. Somebody believes that they may your loudest amen. Yeah. Every contention over your head is declared over today. Yeah. Everyone appointed to death among us is rescued today. Yeah. Everyone appointed to death in your family is rescued today. The sorrow of death is over in your household. Yeah. Now, whatever represents a seed of sickness or disease in your body, I command it to dry off from the root. Yeah. The battle over your health and over your life is finally over. Put your right hand on your forehead. I decree a seal of longevity over your life today. <laughs> By that hand on your forehead, every devil responsible for timely death clears the way for you. Every agent of the devil on a mission to launch an attack on your life clears the way for you. Yeah. Today marks the end of uncertainty in your life. Yeah. Every cause of untimely death placed by the wicked on anyone's family is terminated today. By that hand on your head, every siege of terminal disease, cancer, HIV, AIDS, hepatitis B, sickle cell anemia, whatever is called incurable, I decree your rescue right now. I decree your rescue right now. I decree your rescue right now. It shall be said of your family from today, they don't die young in our family. They don't die young in our family. Under this prophetic anointing, 
every siege of untimely death is declared finally over. Amen. Mark today's date, it shall be remembered as a day of encounter in your life. Amen. Your going out is preserved. Amen. Your coming in is preserved. Amen. No more harassment on your health. No more harassment of the fear of death. In the name of Jesus. Your testimony begins today. Whatever the wicked is sitting on on your life is unseated now. Your destiny is rescued. Your destiny is rescued. And your destiny is rescued. So shall it be. Now, within 24 hours, whatever came with you as a concern on your head is turned to a testimony. That goiter went off within 24 hours. Now, within 24 hours, whatever came with you to this service that is not of God, whatever represents the siege of, sick, of sickness and disease, the spirit of infirmity, within 24 hours, you see them no more again from you. Everything responsible for unfruitfulness in anyone's life is rooted out finally today. I declare everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone online today that is called barren, I decree your fruitfulness. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. As your days, so shall your strength be. Amen. Your life will never know a diminishing return. Like he did to his servant Moses, he will do to you and me as we continue to serve him. Yeah. At 120, your natural force will not be abated. Yeah. At 120, your eyes will not be dim. Yeah. The hand of God will be saying visibly on your life. Yeah. And that beginning from today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the encounter of this month last you your lifetime. May the encounter of this month last you your lifetime. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. Give him thanks, give him thanks. Give him thanks that siege is over. 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 Give him time, the siege is over. Give him time, the siege is over. The siege over your head is over. The siege over your destiny is over. Give him time, the siege is over. Say with me, the siege is over. Say with faith and confidence. The siege over my life is over. The siege over my family is over. The siege over my destiny is over. Give the Lord the biggest shout of praise. Amen. Shall we share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Sean, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please, for emphasis, remember Tuesday we are gathering to stand in the gap for Nigeria. How many believe Nigeria needs prayers? Okay, God will hear us and will write the story of our nation. There shall be no calamities. There shall be no devastations. The nation shall be rescued from the hand of the wicked. All demonic powers manipulating Nigeria shall be subdued. And the nation shall go forward. Be part of this a public holiday. So 5.30, we are up on there at the video DC Center. Be there and you'll be blessed. And this week is a spiritual week of emphasis. Please plug in, plug in, plug in. 
renew the oil on your life, renew the hand of God on your life by committing yourself to what moves people forward. Amen. Amen. Operation Befriend the Neighbor is on. You must be a prize winner in it. Amen. Don't be satisfied to participate. Be gone for the prize and you will have it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations. Help me congratulate your neighbor. The siege of death is over. The siege of sickness and disease is over. Free at last and free forever. Congratulations.